So with Ryzen out later this week, it's time to talk benchmarks. Specifically guys, I want to talk about the process that I'm going to use to benchmark my 1700X from AMD when it arrives, hopefully on Friday or Saturday so that I can play with it to my heart's content. First and foremost, I'm using what I already have here available to me, and fortunately I have plenty in that department. The system to my left here is my current main rig, and that sports a 4790K clocked at 4.7 gigahertz and it's gonna be benchmarked using all the same tests as the Ryzen chip and it'll be benchmarked both at stock speed and at an overclock speed just like the Ryzen chip. In addition, I'll be using my FX8350 as another benchmark to sort of compare the 1700X to. Now the 8350 is an octa-core processor but does not have any kind of multi-threading whatsoever. It'll be used again at stock speed and also at overclock and if I recall correctly that chip hits about 4.6 gigahertz, maybe 4.5. We'll see where I get when I go back to overclock that chip but it will have some sort of overclock. And last but not least, we have the Ryzen 1700X, which has a stock speed of 3.4 gigahertz and turbos up to 3.8 gigahertz or 3.9 gigahertz if you have the cooling capacity. Turbo mode engaged! Now the 1700X will also have an overclocked uh, testing done on it. However, I don't know what mine will overclock to. In fact, I don't even know what expectations should be because to my knowledge, we haven't seen a whole lot of overclocked leaks coming out of the Ryzen side of things. So I really don't know what to expect from it. I am really hopeful though that I can hit 4.2 gigahertz on the 1700X. But again, I have no idea how easily the Ryzen processors will overclock. So I wanna use the following test in an effort to benchmark all three of these processors. Understanding that I already know that the 8350, uh, barring some sort of miracle, will come in dead last in pretty much every single one of these tests. However, I do think it's important to throw it in there just for comparison's sake from where AMD is coming and where it is going. Now the 4790K is a Haswell chip, so it is not the newest that Intel has to offer. Even though it's only Haswell, I do think it's fairly representative of what you can expect from most modern Intel chips. Yes, Skylake and KB Lake will have a nice little performance bump over Haswell, but it's not a gigantic jump like it will be going from the FX8350 to the Ryzen 1700X. So my tests are as follows. I'm going to do a Cinebench single-threaded test as well as a multi-threaded test. Obviously, I'm very curious to see how the Haswell overclock uh, and single thread performance compares to the 1700X and its single thread performance, especially with the both overclock, because that's gonna be how the, the 1700X will run in my system on a daily basis. I'm also gonna do a couple of Adobe Premiere um, renders, and those will be using uh, one short clip and one longer clip. So. My target time for the Haswell chip is I'm gonna to try to get one clip that renders in about a minute or two, and then I'll try to get one that would render over a longer period of time, like 10 or 15 minutes, and see if the gaps stay relatively close, if the 1700X blows it away, or if they actually are fairly close, and see if they scale from short to longer clips about equally. In addition to the video render, I'm also gonna do a couple of different audio renders. One is gonna be done in Adobe Audition, and that is just so I can sort of see um, if Adobe scaling is very similar between the uh, rendering of audio and the rendering of video, I honestly expect those to be somewhat similar. And then I'm also going to use Audacity because I know there are a ton of people out there that love Audacity because it's free, open source, super convenient uh, bit of software. And I want to see if it compares to Adobe Audition as far as its render times go. I also plan on throwing in more benchmarks that are gaming related as well. Firestrike Extreme will be one that I'll throw in there because um, even though it's not specifically CPU bound is, as much as it is GPU bound, I am very curious to see how the, the, the times change, then uh, the frame rate changes and the score overall changes based on the CPU being swapped out. In addition to that, I'm gonna be timing Civilization V and how long it takes it to calculate turns, especially late game. So I'm gonna use the same saved game and I'm going to uh, use the same turn in the game and just run it multiple times and reload it, probably exit out, clear out of the game if I feel like I need to, and see how it 
um, sort of generates the, the turn and I'll time it from the moment I hit the next turn button to the time it turns back over control to the user. Grand Theft Auto and Shadow of Mordor will both also be used and I'm gonna use those two benchmarks because they have a built-in benchmark tool to keep the benchmarks very consistent run to run and that's super helpful for me because I can see how the processors are stacking up from run to run and if there's consistency there or any sort of fluctuations that I can't really account for. The last couple ones I'll throw in there is a Fallout 4 bit of gameplay. That one will be a little bit less Less consistent because it does not have the built-in benchmarking tool but I'll do the best I can to run basically the same uh, bit of the game with all the processors and then the last part is gonna be a project cars race and I'm mostly picking project cars because I haven't actually played it a whole lot though I do own it and I'm curious about how that'll go as well as I feel like the whole racing sim will be uh, just another genre to sort of throw in the mix and then the last part is from you guys. I want to know from you where you think my benchmarks can be improved. Where in the process could I make them a little bit more useful to you, the viewer? Leave me comments down below suggesting different things to benchmark. Do you want me to take a look at MOBAs or CSGO? Or do you want me to focus on a completely different genre of uh, video games? Or are there other synthetic benchmarks that you would like to see me run? If you would, then go ahead and comment those down below. I'll do the best that I can to get those arranged. However, keep in mind that my game library is fairly limited. And unless you're planning on buying me games, which I would gladly accept, then there's only so much I can do here. And that's really the purpose of this video. I want to give you my benchmarking process and then get a little bit of feedback before the 1700X comes so I know where I can take the benchmarks and how I can better suit them to my viewers, which are you guys. As always, guys, if you like this video and you like the feedback that I'm asking for, that sort of thing, then give me a like down below because I appreciate that a super lot. Even better yet, you can share, subscribe, all those things are great. You can follow me on social media, at Hoodra Hardware on both Instagram and on Twitter. Instagram will be the big one, though, because that's where I'm going to be taking all the pictures of the Ryzen build as I put it together. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up the video. I'm Shane from Hoodra Hardware, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.